What is up, man? 25 Gamers. Today's video is going to be the concept of the week. Probably going to be my favorite uh, segment of our new schedule we've got popping here. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you are new. We have a lot of Madden 25 content uh, that will be uh, done in preparation uh, for the new Madden 15 game. And today's concept um, is all about the constraint theory. I talk about it all the time. Having the constraint theory in your offense is essential to having success in Madden 25, having success in any year's game. And um, today's constraint theory, we're going to be talking about having routes um, that do the same basic principle, but they, they do it at different levels or different points in the progression. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and flip sides here, get my um, playbook right here. Uh, we're going to play, get down here. But again, the constraint theory, all about this, you have plays that look the same but the routes work differently. So for example, we're gonna talk about it between, we're gonna have a combination, we're gonna have two combo plays here for today. We're gonna to be talking about the levels concept and we're gonna be talking about the smash concept. Both concepts can be made uh, from a, any play that has like a corner route um, or something like a corner route. So for example, what we like to use is the Z spot from the shotgun normal formation out of the Minnesota playbook. Now, what we like to do with this, and this is just a concept, it can be applied to any play that you're running, and, and we're going to talk about that uh, obviously throughout the summer, but the point is, when you're running, when you're working with the constraint theory, you're, you're talking more of a conceptual way to play, and so it can be applied to anything. So, for example, if you're going to run a halfback dive to the right, have a play action off of that halfback dive, and then also have a halfback stretch, and then have a counter, and then have you know you have you have to counter everything you do. Everything has to look the same, but it has to go in different ways. We talk about that all the time in Madden, and uh, we're going to talk about the day with the levels concept. So what we like to do uh, with this play here uh, is we like to take the running back, and we like to streak him, we like to take Green here, put him on an in route, and then we want to put a basic curl flat read to the left side of the field. And so we're going to put Hawkins on a zig or a flat. And we're going to put Jones on the smart routed out route. And what we're all really, really using for this play is the corner route. Now, this is the smash concept. And so, of course, you're going to run it, and it gets two men under. You're going to, ooh, that wasn't a good look there. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I forgot. Uh, you do want to motion. You do want to motion the uh, corner route out to the outside. So that becomes a basic spread formation. Another thing you could do is you could motion potentially AJ Green inside or whatever, but I just think this play works better with uh, Eifert outside. And uh, you see now the corner route beats man um, with a pass lead down to the outside. Now I'm not really, I don't want to get into a ton of discussion on why this play works. I just want to kind of go through and show you the progression uh, just so you can get the concept. And so of course you have that in route. Now what we can do is we can use that in route as a key to change up the entire play. So now we're going to run levels. And so we're going to use that same curl flat to the left side. But now we're going to take Tyler Eifert here, put him on an in route, which is going to break at the same point that his corner route did. We're going to then put AJ Green on that out route, or excuse me, that in route, that's uh, just regular in route. And we're going to leave Bernard, you can put Bernard on a streak or you could leave him on that little flat pattern. I like to put him on a streak, but uh, as we'll see here, this play should be pretty effective uh, in terms of in terms of working off the smash concept. So something that may, they may do to combat the smash concept is call a cover three. Okay, and so they may, they may even show blitz or something. They may just get wild with their adjustments or something. Anyway, they may call a cover three. Okay, so if they call that and we're running smash, Obviously, we're going to try to hit uh, the curl flat concept to the left. So now what the defense might begin to do, and this is where the constraint theory comes in, they might begin to overplay stuff. So they may call cover two sink. But now what they're going to do, because the cover two sink is going to take away the curl flat read to the left. So now what they're going to do is they're going to call the YY cushion coverage so that they get the, the deep coverage on... Um, Eifert on the right side of the field and then they're going to take the middle linebacker and he is now going to be manned up on AJ Green just to simulate a user defender well if we call the constraint theory and we use our levels concept obviously the tight ends are now wide open 
because he's not cutting to the outside. And that's a perfect uh, transition uh, to the to again reiterate constraint theory. It's all constraint theory. So now, say we're running. So now they're getting kind of comfortable with that. So we want to mix that up, and we want to go with some some kind of a constraint theory to the left side. Well, how do we do that? Well, we do that by putting Jones on a smart routed in route instead of a smart routed curl route because cover two sync is supposed to stop the out route, but cover two sync should not stop this smart routed in route because that zig route is going to hold down that yellow zone. And now you see this is kind of how you get going. This is kind of how the the you know the beakers and everything pop off, and how uh, you really can become a very dominant player in this year's game. And now I I personally really I, I've really enjoyed leaving Bernard on that uh, little little flat pattern uh, just as a quick throw in case they blitz. But again, you see how kind of the gears move and and how you want to have uh, routes off a route and uh, constraint theory. That's what constraint theory means. It's all based upon starting out with one concept and then having another concept that basically builds off that same route tree and uh, you just go from there and you plays that look the same but do different things. Uh, so again, another example. Maybe now we run the levels to the, to the left. Okay, and, and then now we run the curl flat to the right, put Bernard on that flat. So now this is your read. Okay, and so we know the in routes pretty good against speedy man if they don't get bumped. But now what they do, and we'll just go back over this real quick. So now say you've been running the levels concept too much. So they're gonna start they're gonna start trying to take away levels. Well, arguably the best way to take away levels is what they cover three defense. Arguably. Uh, that's the best way to take away levels. But they know that you have a curl flat concept on the on the left side. So we're going to put the purple out there for the curl flat zone, drop a flat here and kind of overplay that. Well, now if you call smash at the right time, should get an opportunity to fit in this corner route. And there you see that window for the corner route. And you see how these words, routes work off each other. Guys, the constraint theory in closing is all about having plays that look the same but go in different directions. You want to do this in your man beaters, your zone beaters, your base plays, your running formations. Everything works off the of constraint theory. This is the foundation of offense and defense. This is the foundation of how you work a formation. What I mean by that, we have our five sets for success. We have our base play, our man beater, our zone beater, our blitz beater, and our three-headed rushing attack. But the constraint theory is where it really starts to get dicey. How do you work off of that? If your opponent knows the play you're running before you call it, he has a better chance of stopping it. But by using the constraint theory, we take advantage of players who try to overplay our reads. And this excels our Madden game by allowing us to take advantage of that and score more touchdowns, winning more ball games, and becoming a better gamer overall. Please apply the constraint theory to your game and tell me uh, if you guys had success with this tip. Also, guys, real quick, if you would leave me a comment, um, a suggestion, or if you had any problems with this video, uh, if you would please let me know those in the comments so that I can deal with that. And then lastly, I am uh, wanting to let you know that I'm taking questions on my Twitter account. If you want, if you have any question related to Madden 25, any question at all, uh, that is obviously that is appropriate, please Send me a tweet, and I will be having a new series coming up uh, where I take your questions, and I just take an episode uh, on my channel, and I, I just answer them. And so uh, hopefully you guys will take advantage of that. And uh, anyways, guys, we will see you later. Once again, glad to be back, and I uh, can't wait to see what we have planned for the future. Thanks for your time today, and we will see you tomorrow.